There's been reports in Montana of 80% of the population dying off from this viral disease. If you come across deer in the news, chances are you're reading about chronic wasting disease. But there's a whitetail pandemic out there that's equally as bad. So deer numbers are really down. It's gonna be a challenging hunt. Sparse cover, fewer deer, and uh, an aging old man. Who's gonna win this episode of Deer and Deer Hunting? Grab your computer. Do a simple search for whitetail diseases. What do you find? CWD, COVID-19, tuberculosis. What's not there? Epizootic hemorrhagic disease. How EHD affects deer, it has to be the right recipe, so to speak. What happens is, let's just talk about Nebraska in 2012. They were just hammered by EHD and it set them back for many years. What happened was there was a lot of precipitation early in the year, followed by an extended drought. And when you get to this extended drought, what do deer do, especially you get to July and August, they congregate at whatever water sources they can find. EHD is transmitted by a midge. Just think about it as a noceum, a tiny little gnat that lives in the mud banks of small water sources, creeks, ponds, just little drainages where there's any bit of water. When deer congregate there, these midges basically go from deer to deer to deer, biting these deer for a blood meal and transmitting that disease. And what happens is you find entire age classes. Older bucks, normally they're traveling in bachelor groups. You're gonna see entire age classes, four, five, six year old bucks completely wiped out. Well, chronic wasting disease maybe affects up to 11%. It can be a little higher than that in some areas, uh, but it's still not a huge, huge factor where it's taking out, you know, half the population like uh, EHD can. There's been reports in Montana in the northern part up in Milk River country of 80% of the population dying off from this viral disease. I like clothes, but that might be too close, huh? That's only going to be about a 100 yard shot, right? Late in the summer, this entire region from uh, central South Dakota all the way into Montana and Wyoming has been hit with EHD, epizootic hemorrhagic disease, or as some people refer to it as blue tongue. So deer numbers are really down. It's gonna be a challenging hunt. Little cover, sparse cover, fewer deer, and uh, an aging old man. That's what we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to settle for it. Well, at least he would make a good key rack. Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Seven days after infection, clinical symptoms seen in deer include not eating, weakness, loss of fear of humans, circling, and other neurological disorientation. After they get bit, and if they don't have the antibodies or, or the buildup in their body to fight this, they die. So it's a fast death, and it's a violent death. With the feeling of a raging internal fever, infected deer will seek out bodies of water to try to cool themselves down. This often results in an unintentional act of self-mercy, and they drown. Something you really don't want to see, but it, it's part of nature. So what can we do about it? If you have a big outbreak, say 10, 20, 30% die off from epizootic hemorrhagic disease, 
your rescue plan is having a lot of does around to repopulate as fast as possible. If you try to trim that doe population, especially down to a one to one ratio, you don't have that many does around to be shooting out fawns. A lot of times you have to recalibrate your expectations as a hunter. And that's hard. If you're a big buck hunter and you're going after mature deer, four or five year old deer, you get wiped out like in Nebraska, what happened there? That sets them back four or five years. So now what are you going to do? You're either going to find a different place to hunt or you're going to have to, like I said, reevaluate how you're hunting. And it's just one of the realities with EHD that we can't get our hands around and it's going to be something that's going to be here, especially with the way the climate has been the last 10, 20 years. It's going to be with us for quite a while. God, she might drown. This year I had a hunt planned in South Dakota with my good friend Levi Duncan. Levi and I have known each other for years. Uh, I actually knew him as a, as a kid. He's, he's a few years younger than me, but he loved the outdoors. So he had reached out to me, said, why don't we get together and do a hunt? When I was in the back country in Colorado and Wyoming chasing elk in the early part of the season, reports started to trickle out of an epizootic hemorrhagic disease breakout in South Dakota. And we just decided that we were gonna make this work, hunt as hard as we could. It's hunting anyway, right? Fewer deer, it's gonna be more challenging. Drought in the area, yeah, there wasn't as much cover, but I knew that the quality of deer were still there. It was just gonna be a little bit more scrounging through the rough country to find a buck for our TV hunt. On the first property that Mark and Levi hunted, the mule deer had moved in and pushed the surviving whitetails onto the neighbor's land. The hunt was off to a slow start, but Mark wasn't headed back to the truck completely empty-handed. Well, if you could see horns, it's yeah. probably a shooter. I could see horns. Should we get it back that way again? Yeah. I'd like to check that other field above my eyes. But then bouncing around different spots just because the deer numbers are so low we're trying to find any little concentration this cornfield has been it when we got in here now we saw a buck off on the horizon in the standing corn and where he's at it's about this high it's almost chin chest high to me he's got a doe he's pushing around the real problem is there's no wind today and this is a crunchy environment so trying to go from here to where he's at could take an act of God. We're just gonna keep moseying that way. Hopefully we'll be able to cut the distance. But not before stopping for a little afternoon snack. That's gross, Mark. That buck took off and I knew with the way the conditions were, no wind, hardly at all, trying to walk through crackling corn, it was going to be tough to sneak up on a deer in this, in this type of setting on that afternoon. I still had confidence even despite the EHD breakout, but Levi was holding out on me. He had another spot that he said he had scouted while we were in the cornfield and there were deer in there. We were gonna hit that the next morning. Next morning, those winds, yeah, the forecasters were right for once. They were howling, and the temperature was in the 20s. So that added up to a wind chill, well, in the teens and single digits. And when you're sitting on an open prairie hillside in South Dakota with the winds just hammering you, you get cold fast. Despite all of that bad news, we were seeing deer everywhere. 
one of the bucks that just surprised Levi, and I knew it was a good buck, was this four by four, basic four by four, I think he may have been a four by five, but narrow and heavy. And he had one distinguishing factor, a right brow tine that stood taller than his left. You're thinking this hill right here? Wow, I was thinking that. Just as we were getting ready to make a stock on this big right brow tine buck, a truck pulled up on the neighboring property. Yeah, that's kind of common during deer season, other hunters out and about moving around. But that big buck, he was a mature deer. And when he saw that truck, whew, he didn't care about any hot does. He left the country. And then as the wind continued to howl, most of the morning activity subsided. The deer were finding their little, little spots to bed down for the day. We decided it was a good time to get back to the truck, warm up, grab a sandwich, make a plan for the afternoon. It was unbelievable. The wind had dropped down to almost nothing. In fact, it was one of those beautiful November days to be out deer hunting. So we got up on a ridge there, snuck in, and immediately got pinned down by does. But the ridge looked good. We had shooting options to the west, we had shooting options to the east, we had shooting options to the south, and all of them were where I could get in a good sniper position to shoot off my backpack, get a solid hold, Levi would be beside me ranging, Everything looked good. And then we looked around over our shoulder and there's that big brow time buck. And where do you think he was going? Yeah, he jumped the fence right in front of us where we'd been sitting in the morning onto the neighbor's land. Coyotes were starting to show up again and I was thinking, yeah, maybe it's time to turn this into a coyote hunt. And that's when out of the sunset, a group of does started marching toward us. Yeah, they're at desert right now. They're in good shooting range. Here he comes. Here comes a buck right behind him. That's a good one. Shooter. Leva, that happened at the last minute. This has been a tough hunt. There's nothing left to do but um. See if he's down. I think he, he is. I don't think we need to. Let's just go back to truck. <laughs> Let's go. <sighs> Look at that, Levi. He's done. He's heavy. He's got good math. You do the honors. I'm gonna clear my rifle. Oh, nice, five by five. Look at his G3s. We've been hunting hard. We've been fighting wind today. But the biggest thing we've been fighting is EHD. We have hardly seen any mature bucks the whole time. It's all young deer that survived the EHD. So to find a buck like this, a nice five by five, probably a four and a half year old. Four and a half, yeah. yeah. I'm starting to get impatient. South, to, this is gonna happen. South Dakota, back in the homeland. All right, man. All right. It's fun again. <laughs> Thank you.
Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Okay, this is my slightly redneck way of getting new scent out of boots. Brand new boots, smells like the store. Smells like a rubber tire, right? Well, this is what I do. Trusty old plastic tote, just a little bit of scent killer. That's This is just laundry detergent. Just straight up scent killer laundry detergent. Maybe a half a capful, this is all I need. And then what I do is I will just take the hose and just suds that up a little bit. and just get the boot in there. Let it fill up with water, let the suds do their work. When they're perfectly submerged, there's water inside of them. I just let them sit for a couple hours, take them out, rinse them off, hang them up and let them dry. It's as simple as that. I do this with my old boots as well. You know, old boots get pretty nasty and mucky. The reason why I do this is I had been using the ozone generators and they destroy boots, they destroy rubber, anything anything hard material, even your jackets and your zippers and things, after time they come apart from that ozone. This really helps keep them scent free and then once I get them dry, I keep them in a scent tote, my hunting boots in a scent tote until hunting season and that's about as scent free as I can get. Fire in the hole. Deer hunting, hey, it's hard enough. But these days, you got ammunition shortages, you've got supply chain issues, and of course, inflation that affects the price of all our hunting gear. So what do I look for to solve all these issues? Well, say if you're uh, shopping for a new caliber deer rifle, I would suggest looking for a fairly common caliber. Now, that can be tough these days with all the new varieties showing up, but one fairly new one on the block that is really common these days is the 6.5 Creedmoor. Now the 6.5 Creedmoor you're saying, oh that's not that common, but actually it is. It's one of the calibers that manufacturers are focusing on the most, just like Hornady. And like Hornady, like I've shown you here, you want to look for a company that is out there producing as much as possible, a popular company. Now Hornady, for example, you can find them in every sporting goods outlet from coast to coast. So shopping for a caliber that's fairly common like the 6.5 Creedmoor and a company that's always going to produce, that's a good plan. So consider a common caliber. Go with a good company like Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable, and you're going to have a deer rifle that fits you for every occasion, plus coyotes and target shooting. <laughs>